With vectors, unit vectors are another helpful tool to help us to write things down. Uh, they help us with component form, they help us with how we write vectors, and maybe it's important to just talk about what unit means. Unit means one. So a unit vector is any vector with a length of one unit. That's it. So a vector with a length of one unit. Now, I haven't taught you how to, or I haven't gone over how to find the length of a vector, but we'll be doing that soon. A vector with a length of one unit. There's lots of ways of defining vectors. This is one of them. So a vector with a length of one unit. So let's let's maybe talk about this. I mean, this is if I was actually measuring a vector, it would actually have a length. It would be its magnitude, as we called it before. Um, if I want to try to draw in three dimensions, maybe that's a helpful way to do it. Uh, it's a bit tough, though, to draw in 3D, so I'm going to attempt to do it with some lines here. There we go, like this. So I could, of course, be drawing anything, but in this case, I want to draw it like this. I'm going to draw the x-coordinate, the y-axis, sorry, and the z-axis. So this would be trying to draw in three dimensions, even though I'm drawing on this two-dimensional plane here. So I'm attempting to draw in 3D. You'll see I'm really bad at it, but you know I'll make an effort here. So when I say a length of one unit, what I mean is exactly this now, because we have three different directions in our Cartesian coordinates here. We have our x, our y, and our z direction. Then we could have the simplest type of unit vector that has a length of one unit long would be one that goes only in the x direction. So let's just assume that one only in the x direction, let's say. That would be one. Uh, what if we drew one that went only one unit in the y direction? That might be this one. And what if we drew one that only went one unit in the z direction? That might be that one. So we can actually write the coordinates of these. Remember we were learning before that if we want to write coordinates, we say, you know, the x, y, z coordinates of each of them. So we've actually got names now for these. So the first one, we're going to call it i. The next one's going to be called j, and the next one's k. So i is going to be defined as the vector that has, now watch carefully here, it goes one in the x direction, and this one ha goes none in the y direction, because it doesn't go down this way at all, and it goes none in the z direction. It's only in the x so that means it goes 1, 0, 0. Because remember, in three dimensions, vectors go x, y, z, like this. So because of that, we define i as 1, 0, 0. Some people draw it bold because it's a vector. Some people put a little arrow on top of it. You can do that too. Um, I just prefer it just with the i as an actual letter i. Now we have j is the next one, and that one only goes in the y direction. So because of that, it'll have none in the x direction, one in the y direction, and zero in the z direction. And finally, we have k, and you can see where that one's going. That one is only in the z direction, so zero, zero, one. These are defined as the three main unit vectors, but you could use anything else as a unit vector. It turns out you can do things with like, one over square root of twos, for example, you can do things like that. So there are there exists many, many, many other vectors that have a length of one. It's just that these are the ones that are fully in the x direction or y or z. So it turns out these are handy to use. So like I said, it's not that these are the only three ones that are unit vectors. There are infinitely many unit vectors. It's just that these are the handy ones to use. And we use this because we can now use this as a form to write vectors in. So this we can say this vector v equals 2 times i plus 3 times j plus 1 times k. And that means we can figure out what's really going on here. We can then write this vector as, let's see now, it's 2 times vector i, and i is 1, 0, 0, plus 3 times vector j, so 0, 1, 0, plus, this turns out to be 1, so 1 times vector k, which is just 0, 0, 1. Well, that means I can rewrite it as, well, 2 times 1, 0, 0 is just going to be 2 times 1, which is 2, and then 2 times 0, which is 0, and 0, so this still remains 0 here. Plus, 3 times all of this, so 3 times 0 is still 0, 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times 0 is still 0. Plus, in this original one, 0, 0, 1. 
And now all I have to do, even though I haven't formally showed you how to add vectors, I hope you can see that what we can do then is just say, all right, if I want to take this, I take all the x values and add them together. So 2 plus 0 plus 0 is 2. All the y values, in other words, the middle row here, I'm going to add them. 0 plus 3 plus 0 is just 3. And 0 plus 0 plus 1 is just 1. So I can then define this vector v, which is 2 times i plus 3 times j plus 1 times k, is the same thing as saying 2, 3, 1. And that will hopefully make sense. Because if you see this, if you say 2, 3, 1 in front of the k, that's like taking your numbers, 2, 3, 1, and making them into a component form vector. So I've changed from unit vector form into component form. That's all I've done here. Uh, oh, here I've got a really bad joke. I love this meme. So I don't always make vector jokes, but when I do, I, J, K. That's because J, K, you know, just joking or just kidding. But okay, let's keep going. That's maybe too dumb, even for me. So when we talk about more general notation, what we can do now is actually define something. We can actually say something about vectors that might actually be very useful for us. We can actually compare the two different forms. So for example, what I'm going to do now is talk about, um, or at least just write down very quickly, uh, how we can rewrite these. So we can say any vector v, this could be any vector, I could name it a or b or q or whatever, but let's just call it v for vector. If it has notation v1, v2, v3, because it doesn't just have to be you know, x, y, z, it could be anything. Let's just say like this. You can also write it as v1 times i plus v2 times j plus v3 times k. This is also the same thing. So this I think is really, really important. Maybe I'll even do this in a special kind of writing if I can. I'll do it in what's called creative pen. Yeah, let's do that one. So this is a generic form for a vector. Right? We can write it in lots of different ways. So this right here defines how we can write it. So we can call it this right here, which is in unit vector form or we can write it in component form either way it's still okay right they're equivalent so basically write it whatever way you feel like they're both equivalent now actually trying to draw vectors in 3d i think is really really difficult like i showed you before i'm going to attempt to show you that again just in case but uh let's be honest here computer programs work a lot better than my stupid hands here do, but I'll, I'll try it out anyway. So I'm going to try to draw you here a uh, 3D vector. So here we go. We've got this right here. Oh, just trying to move this one. Yeah, like that. Maybe that's better. All right, and I've got my X, my Y, and my Z. So let's say I try to draw this one here. I'm going to try to draw maybe like uh, where these things project. So this right here, one, this is in the X. Remember, this goes X, Y, Z. So one in the X direction. So I would project over here, one in the X direction, somewhere over here. Let's say right here. Uh, and then I would go one in the Y direction. So I would also go in the Y direction, one over here. So that would sort of project to, I don't know if you can see this, I'll try to draw like little dotted lines here. That would sort of be like this, and it would kind of go out to here. If I was trying to draw something here, it would be like a little arrow going out to here. That would be something sort of like the shadow of it from the top view. It would be one in the X, one in the Y, so it would sort of go out that way. But it says it goes two in the Z, so that means from here you have to go up by two units, however many that is, and that is where it would project. It's really hard to see in 3D here, but that's what we're trying to do. And then I would connect this from here to here, and that would be my vector here. And that's because it would go up by two from this bottom corner here. That's sort of how I like to see these things. So it goes sort of that way, sort of that way, sort of that way, and sort of that way. That's sort of how you do this. You can see it sort of projecting again onto this plane over here. This is sort of how it would go here like this. You know, I can make sort of a box. Maybe it's clearer like this. Then you can sort of see where this thing here is projecting. It's sort of coming out into your face over here. It's not going straight up because it goes one in the X, one in the Y. And then it goes, you know, from this point over here, it goes up by two. I think it's really difficult to draw. Good news, when you're actually trying to work with these mathematically, you don't have to worry about drawing them. Very often you just work on the solutions like this. And it's very easy to work with the math part of it. Actually drawing it geometrically, 
I think it's beautiful if you can you know, take this and project it and move it. But if you're bad at drawing like I am, you don't have to worry so much with 3D or even 4D or 5D vectors. Don't worry about it. Just do the math and it works out just 